homework time! Yes! Let's do it! Start by jotting our name down at the top of the paper. Don't ever want to forget that. That's why we always do it. Every single time. I'll put my name, you put yours. Then go ahead and write today's date. Why not? Do it right. I'll write today, you write the actual date. Here we go. Instructions. Subtract. All right. I think you're going to like tonight's homework. Well, because look at this. Five and one-fourth minus three-fourths. Basically, this is subtraction with regrouping, right? If this were, say, 51 minus 3, we'd have to regroup in order to subtract. All right, so that's all we're doing. And so we're doing, same as we used to go to the tens place, and, you know, and da da ba ba All right, so we're going to go to the ones, to the five, and we'll leave four there, and we'll pull out one in the form of four-fourths, which we have to combine with the one-fourth we already have there. This is, this is regrouping, right? And so that's why we have five fourths. So here, look, look, four, there's four, and this is, so think of this, and I'm just jotting this down, you don't have to write this. This is four plus one and one fourth, because five fourths is one and one fourth, right? And so that's five and one fourth, which is what we started with, okay? So this is all kosher, this is what we're doing. So what we're saying here essentially is, hey, let's think of five and one fourth instead as four and five fourths. They're equal. It just, it's regrouping to make the subtraction easier. That's all we're doing here. So I'm writing five and one fourth as four and five fourths because now it's quite easy to subtract that three fourths. I'm left with the four holes. Then five fourths minus three fourths leaves two fourths. That's it. And now it's going to get wicked easy. Watch this. So six and three eighths. Again, I'm going to go back to the cakes. Five of those cakes, I am just going to leave alone. I don't have to mess with them. But this sixth cake, I'm going to think of as eight-eighths combined with the three-eighths I already have is eleven-eighths. Ah, five and eleven-eighths. I'm just going to kind of write straight through here. Minus the six-eighths. Now I can do that. Yes, so those five cakes, again, I am leaving alone. Eleven-eighths minus six-eighths. Five-eighths. Wow. Let's do some more. All right, well, first here on, in this group, we have one more just like the others to do. So seven and four-six minus five-six. Obviously, I can't take five from four. That's why I need to regroup here. Same as with in whole number subtraction. So those seven cakes, six of them, I'm just going to set aside and leave alone. That seventh cake, though, I'm going to think of as six six with the four six I already have is ten six. Now I can subtract five six from that. Well, it's going to leave those six whole cakes just as they were, and ten six minus five six leaves five six. There we go. It's that easy. Now these two, th these get different here, here in number two, and we have more. Um, because now, look, here we were subtracting a mixed number minus a proper fraction. So it was a little bit easier. Here, though, this is actually the most difficult thing you'll do in fractions in fourth grade, besides the comparing. That could be tricky. But, um, but this is really it, where you have two mixed numbers, and you have to regroup in the subtraction. So if you get this, you are, like, set for fourth grade. Really, this is probably the trickiest thing. All right, and so their advice here is, Okay, we're going to do the same thing we did up here in number one, which you understood, but we're going to just do this step beforehand and, as the instructions say, subtract the ones first. So here, look, we have four and one-fifth minus one and three-fifths. Now, this would be simple if we didn't have to regroup because we can't take three from one, right? Three-fifths from one-fifth. That's why we need to regroup. So they're saying, hey, just subtract the ones first. So they rewrite. I'm, you don't have to write this bracket, but I want you to separate this out. Look, this right here is simply being rewritten here after subtracting 4 minus 1 is 3. That's all that's done in this first step is subtracting the whole number, the 1s, first. 4 minus 1 is 3, and then the fractions you see are the same. 1 fifth minus 3 fifths. And I've removed my brackets there. Okay, so they're not in the way. And now we're looking at 3 and 1 fifth minus three-fifths, oh, that looks just like the ones we just did. 
So of those three cakes, I set two aside. Think of the third cake as five-fifths, with the one-fifth we already have is six-fifths. Two and six-fifths minus three-fifths is those two whole cakes. Six-fifths minus three-fifths is three-fifths. We see how these work? Now, because I'm kind of scant on room down here, I'm going to have to write things up above. But So here we're going to do the same thing. Four and three-sixths minus two and five-sixths. I'm just going to do four minus two first. That's it. Four minus two is two. And then write the fractions as they were. So now I can go to that next step. Okay, so with this two and three six minus five six equals, the of those two cakes, one of those cakes I'm going to leave as is. The other cake, I'm going to have six six with the three six already present is nine six. So one and nine six, ah, now I can subtract five six, right? Okay, so one and nine six minus five six, well that one cake stays the same. Nine six minus five six is four six. There we go. And I know I wrote equal to there, but this is our answer here for B. Hey, uh, let's do some more. Well, you will be glad to hear that two C and D are the same as two A and B. So it's just a little bit of more practice here. So we're going to subtract the whole numbers first. So we'll just rewrite this after doing 8 minus 2 is 6. And then the fractions for now, for this step, we'll just leave as they are. 6 and 3 eighths minus 5 eighths. Because we already subtracted the 2, right? 8 minus 2 is 6. Okay, great. So now let's look at 6 and 3 eighths. All right, so those 6 cakes, 5 of them, I'm just going to leave alone. But that sixth cake, I'm going to think of as eight eighths with the three eighths I already have. Eight eighths and three eighths makes, yes, 11 eighths. And now I can quite easily subtract the five eighths. And what does that leave? Well, I have these five whole cakes. And then 11 eighths minus five eighths leaves, yeah, six eighths. That's it. And we're going to have to draw a number line. Ha! Huh. All right, one more like this. And just because we have a double digit number here, point being, changes nothing. So first step is to simply subtract the whole numbers. 13 minus 8 is, yep, 5. And then we just rewrite the fractions as they are for now. 5 and 3 tenths minus 7 tenths. Because we already subtracted the 8, it's gone, right? All right. So now with the 5 and 3 tenths, well, we see we need to regroup here, right? Just like in whole number subtraction. So four of those cakes, I'm just going to leave alone. That fifth cake, I'm going to have is 10 tenths, with the 3 tenths already here. 10 tenths and 3 tenths is 13 tenths. Now I can subtract 7 tenths quite easily. All right. So those four cakes, again, remain as they are. But 13 tenths minus 7 tenths leaves, you got it, 6 tenths. And can you believe... We just have number three left to do. What is it going to be? Let's find out. Exciting. Well, while our instructions say solve using any strategy, um, this is just more practice. Same thing we were doing in number two, because we'll take a moment and look at the big picture, as I often like to do. Every single one of these is mixed number minus mixed number, where the second fraction has a numerator that's greater than the numerator of the first fraction. So you have to regroup, basically. So it's subtraction of mixed numbers with regrouping. Exactly what we're doing. So we just have four more examples of the same to do. And again, when you look at the big picture, okay, now we're getting into twelfths and sixteenths and even hundredths, tenths, but we know it doesn't change anything. So our first step, as we did before, is to subtract the whole numbers and just rewrite it with the whole numbers subtracted. So 7 minus 4 is 3. And then the 3 twelfths minus 9 twelfths, for now, we'll just rewrite as it is. And we look at this 3 and 3 twelfths. We see we need to regroup because 9 is, we can't take, 9 is greater than 3. We can't take 9 from 3. So two of those cakes we're going to leave as is. And that third cake we're going to have as 12 twelfths with the 3 twelfths already present is... 12 and 3 make? Right, 15, and we talking about twelfths. Now we can easily subtract that 9 twelfths. We have those two whole cakes, and 15 twelfths minus 9 twelfths leaves 
six twelfths, and I bet, ah uh, yes, you were thinking, oh, six twelfths, that's equal to one half. So we could uh, simplify this to two and a half, but that's not what we're doing here. All right, let's look at B. Again, let's start by subtracting those whole numbers. Nine minus five is four. Rewrite the fractions as they are for now. Six tenths minus eight tenths. All right, so those four cakes, we're going to set three aside and leave them as they are. But that fourth cake, we're going to have as ten tenths. With the six tenths already present here is ten tenths and six tenths makes, yes, sixteen tenths. Now we can quite easily subtract eight tenths. That'll leave those three whole cakes as is. 16 tenths minus 8 tenths is 8 tenths. Pretty good one tonight, huh? I like it. All right, 17 minus 9 is how we'll start off this one. What is it? Well, you can think of it as 9 plus what is 17? Okay, 8. Very good. All right, 8, and then just rewrite the fractions as they are for now. 2 sixteenths. Yeah, make that look like a 6. All right, minus 7 sixteenths. All right, so now with that, with those eight cakes, we're going to set seven aside, just leave them as they are. But that eighth cake, we're going to have a 16 sixteenths, with the two sixteenths already present, is 18 sixteenths. And now we can more easily subtract seven sixteenths, so those seven cakes, again, just stay as they are. Um, and now we can do 18 sixteenths minus seven sixteenths leaves Yes, 11 sixteenths. And now for space constrictions, I'm going to write D above, but you can write it below or next to it wherever you want. Um, so I'm going to subtract first 12 minus 8 is 4, and then just rewrite the fractions as they are 5 one hundredths minus 94 one hundredths. And again, these being different kinds of numbers makes no difference whatsoever to us. Okay, so the 4 I'm going to think of as, and watch, I'm going to combine a step in my head here, okay? The 4 I'm going to think of as, well, 3 whole cakes, and then 100 one hundredths. Ah, you try cutting up a cake in 100 pieces, you have a crumbly mess, but we'll do it anyway in our minds. So 100 one hundredths with 5 one hundredths is 105 one hundredths. See, so even though the numbers might look kind of big and scary, it's the same thing. Now we can more easily subtract the 94 one hundredths. And what does that leave us with? Well, we have those three whole cakes. And then 105 hundredths minus 94 hundredths. Well, what's 105 minus 94? Can you see it? Maybe you can add up to do this one. 94 plus 10 is 104. One, more, one more makes 105. 10 and 1 are 11, so 11 hundredths is the difference. And look, booyah, you did it! You completed another homework time just like that. Just crept up on you, snuck up, oh, pounce, crouching math, hidden fractions. See you next time. It is once again homework time.